Hello, David. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. How are you today? I'm uh, good. I, I slept well, and that's uh, that's what's important. <sighs> yeah, I, I definitely love those days. It's and like... then also, I, I was like, oh, I'm, I have to do this thing this afternoon, and I haven't made anything yet. So I spent the day playing with Max, which is always a good day. Ah, oh, those days are the best, where the day just disappears and you end up with a pile of Max patches at the end. I mean, arguably, you have done something, David. <laughs> you made MC. <laughs> Uh, which is what we're here to talk about today. So um, I guess we could start by uh, reversing the clock a little bit and just giving us an idea of like, I I, I forget some of this because it was feels like a long, long time ago now, but like, what what was the impet like impetus? What was the first thing you recall thinking? Like, when did MC first come to your mind? Like... Well, there were two things that I remember. So one was that uh, in some internal company email, Sam Terracasian said, like, why can't we have patch cords with, like, multiple channels in them? And so, you know, I'm just like, because it's hard and I don't know how to do it. <laughs> And then the other thing that happened was, which is a more um, pertinent to the story, is Alex Parker had this tech support issue, which is like, how do I secretly connect two Max objects without anyone knowing? Mm. And so I remember it was like a Sunday morning, and I was trying to make him a little example and i'm like oh well I'll make the example so that four channels of audio go out the secret patch cord of one object and into the other but i mean you can still see the patch cord but you didn't know that it was carrying the four channels of audio right and so um that's just i don't know sine waves or something like that being produced by the first object going into the second object and um I make it so that the second object is basically what MC unpack is now. So mm. that it had individual outlets so you could hear what was coming out the four patch cords in the input. This is all just a stupid example, right? <laughs> and I get the thing working, and then I select, for some reason, I don't know why, just maybe to see if it works. I select the patch cord, and... Uh, delete it and the sound goes away and i'm like that is so hip like all four channels went away at once and i only just had to do this one thing and then basically within three hours i had the basic idea working I, cool. I was so motivated by hearing the four channels of sound stop at once <laughs> was this 2016 2017 i think it was uh 20 17 or 2018. Wow. It's just a Sunday. I don't remember anything else about it. It was a Sunday. That's when the magic happens. Yeah, my not... my recollection there is when you first brought it along to us to to kind of take a run at it and test. And um yeah, I mean my jaw my jaw dropped to the ground. It just felt like a game changer. Yeah, it's the uh, same way to do something you could already do, but um, what does it mean to change the game, right? It's uh, basically you see something that you didn't see before, I guess. Yeah, I remember you telling me, uh, you know, it's like, it's not that you couldn't make 512 copies of Cycle Tilda, but you also couldn't make five. You just wouldn't do it. Like, yeah. 
And the second you could at chance 512, you know, all of a sudden, all of these new creative possibilities kind of open up. Yeah, because of laziness. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely is like yeah, I like the drawing less patch chords is is always nice. Yeah. So um so I made a couple of demos that I I don't know if it's going to be like just in a series of technical problems to try to get um Max hooked up to this thing, but if um if that would be interesting. Um, yeah, let's try let's... to encounter technical problems and see if we can do it. I don't know anything about what to do. I am using the actual app though, which supposedly is, you know, key to. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Uh, Sam, Sam had a good run the other day, although, you know, we, we can work through it. We'll give it a, we'll give it a try. Yeah. If it doesn't work, I'll just put the patches up, uh, and, uh, you can play with them. Which I will do anyway, but you know. Yeah, folks, hear that? We're gonna get some, some uh, of David so. patches. Uh, one of them requires that you have a launch pad and go find some obscure samples on the internet, but you know. I'm having okay. a little issue with this microphone. Sorry. Okay. So what do we do? Uh, can you share your screen? Okay. Share my screen. It's disabled. That uh, should you shouldn't be. Um, let's. It's see. like the yeah. screen button has a no symbol over it. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, I don't think it's a setting on my end. Let all oh, hang on a second. Maybe your role needs to be changed. Oh, here's another button. Let me try that one. One sec. Yeah, it could be the Mac OS security thing. Yeah. Definitely struck that before. <clears throat> okay, I have to quit and reopen. Okay, we'll hang out while you uh, do that. All right, folks. Well, David's got to deal with his Mac OS security. And we'll be back with him in just a moment. As quick as he can restart Discord, basically. Uh, folks, so David's going to give a few demos here, and then we'll throw it open to questions and uh, see what he has to say about your questions. So have a think about what you'd like to ask David about MC or perhaps... Not MC, but Max related. I don't see him back here yet. All right. Who's been having some fun with Max 8.6? Anyone got any links to drop in the chat? Any uh, any new content or recordings you've put out since 8.6 has been released? What's your favorite thing about Max 8.6? Mm. Drop it in the comments. Oh, I see. Where's David? I can't see him here. Sorry about the type. 
There he is. Find to speak. Here he's David's back. Welcome back, David. I think he's back. Trying to figure out which there. of these screens. So entire screen, right? Yeah, I think so. Generally, that works best. <clears throat> nice. Okay. Now, the question is, can you hear this? No, you can't. No. Nope. Okay, so do I have to go to Max and do something? Um, I think, let's see here, what's audio status say? Hmm. Should yeah, I, I do think that Discord would grab your audio. Uh, I typically use loopback to get stuff into Discord. Okay. I'm actually not sure what Sam was using the other day. Okay. He may no. have been using loot back. Okay. Well, maybe I'll have to not do it. Or well, we get dropped at patches and all just open them up on our computer and ask questions yeah, that, about them. Yeah, but um I wonder if I I mean I could use the primitive uh have the speakers of my computer play into the microphone method because the sound that works. that works okay let's do that yeah let's do that okay. um... Uh, these a couple of these patches take a long time to load because you'll as you'll see when I share my screen that they have um, up to sixty four channels of a SAMP, uh, SVIS in them. So <laughs> it's loading a sample bank. So. Okay, so uh, let's zoom in here and I will see if we can hear this. So can you hear that? I cannot I hear that. Can anyone else see that? Uh, it could be the noise <laughs> noise suppression thing in Discord. I know I had to turn it off recently because it was killing Max. The irony of noise suppression killing your Max audio. Turn it off. Okay. Is this working now? Yes. There we go. Okay. All right. So what's going on here? So this one, no, oh, wait. Um, so uh, I'll preface this by saying that the best information I can convey to you about MC is the talk that Tom and I did at Loop in 2018. And I will put a link to that in the chat if someone else doesn't do it first. Um, but there's a, a lot of the concepts uh, behind uh, the way I think about MC are uh, in that talk. And 
some good jokes too. So it's not a short talk, but if you can sit through the whole thing, you might you might learn something about uh, some interesting ways to think about MC. And most of the patches are uh, on the website if you follow the link that I was going to give you. So um, the first thing I wanted to introduce here is that there's a, um, a new object in 8.6 that you may not have uh, heard about, which is this one here called MC MIDI target. And MC MIDI target is very stupid. All it does is takes the MIDI channel out of the in incoming uh, message, which has to be the MIDI event message that comes out of the right outlet of MIDI format and many other objects. And it extracts the MIDI channel out of the status byte and turns the and, uh, and then prepends the MIDI event message that you brought in to MC MIDI target with the message set value and an MC channel. So set value is the key to having real uh, max events like turn into MC channels. So you can say set value to three, and that puts the number three into the MC world on uh, MC channel two. So basically this example is just showing that I can have two, so I've got uh, MC SVIS down here, and, I, and I'm loading this kalimba patch that I got from this um, cool Japanese mysterious group called Unreal Instruments. Nice. And um, they have all sorts of crazy stuff, but I, I really like the, um, their little kalimba and toy piano sample banks, except for the fact that it also, every time you played the kalimba sample, it would also play 20 seconds of the mic noise. <laughs> So I figure that Tom would hate me if I was <laughs> playing 20 seconds of mic noise, pull it uh, with 64 channels. So I had to go in and uh, get rid of the mic noise from the, the SFZ file. And that's one of the really cool things about SFZ is you just go in and hack the format and like change these text files to do what you want. And, uh, you know, it's not like a, um, copy protected thing in contact or UVI workstation or you can't really change anything. So um, I was very happy that I could go in and change the aesthetics of this kalimba slightly to meet my own personal standards. I mean, the mic noise was cool, but it just needed to stop when the... Mm. So You did that with the opcodes, right? Yeah, I just went and deleted yeah. a include file. Right. So. So if you look, I think if I double click on this, you can see um, that uh, it's kind of small, but basically there's a, a bunch of include files mm. and this blank line is where there was a, a mic noise uh, <laughs> SFC file and I just got rid of it. And then it right. just started. Easy. Work. Yeah. So um, anyway, so all this does is when I click this bang, it's going to play two notes and uh, apply a pitch bend trajectory, one going down and one going up independently. So you can hear that both notes were, um, you know, having their sound bent um, independently. So just listen again and you'll probably hear that. So one's on MIDI channel two and uh, one's on uh, MIDI channel one. And in, um, if you use MC mix down to take these 16 channels and mix them to two, it will alternate the output channel. So it puts the channel one in the left speaker and channel two in the right speaker pan hard left and right. So you can hopefully hear, hear that, how that works. So that's all that MC MIDI target does. So now we're going to, we're going to jump up a level in, in complexity here for the next example, um, which is, um, I wanted to use my launch pad to play this kalimba sample. And so I have the challenge of trying to map. It's going to take a while to load all 64 of these uh, sample banks. Um, uh, so I have the challenge of mapping the 64 buttons on my launch pad 
to individual MC channel so that I can, because this is an MPE sampler, I can't mm. bend the notes individually. So I want to fake uh, MPE by duplicating a sampler 64 times, which is what we did in the last example at the loop presentation, which was I was playing a contact sampler uh, piano 40, with 48 um, uh, banks, 48 ind individual VST plugins, um, and then directing the um, MPE coming from a Roly Seaboard Rise to each note individually. So then I could basically control various parameters of the note with ex the expression and the pitch bend independently because um, the contact thing wasn't MPE. So you couldn't do that. And who wants to do that with a piano anyway? <laughs> so the first thing, uh, we'll zoom in here in this little bit. Um, the first thing to notice about this is I, I hacked together this little thing, um, which you might find funny, uh, which is a um, uh, little um, patch that basically takes a note in and takes this weird launch pad button uh, MIDI note format, which is that the lower left button is uh, 11 and the upper right button is 88 and uh, converts it into row and column numbers for the matrix control. So, oh, nice. As you can, so you can see like, um, uh, uh, just because I figured I'm not gonna like set up a camera on my launch pad, you can just see that I'm actually playing it uh, or, you know, think I am. And um, okay, so let's um, zoom back out again. Okay, so the big, the big complexity in this thing is how I'm like mapping the MIDI to MC channel. So they can't use MC MIDI target because I want 64 channels and I want to use the note numbers, not the MIDI channels of the incoming MIDI. Um, so um, I have set up this um, scheme, which uh, is in this sub patcher called voice map. And basically it does something similar to what you're seeing with the uh, matrix control hack, where I divide the, the incoming number by 10, which will be either uh, one or eight. And then I mod it by 10, which is also going to be either one or eight. And then I multiply, I subtract one, multiply the, the big number, the, uh, which is basically the column uh, by eight, and then add the row together. So now I have a continuous space of 64 values between uh, one and 64. So th that can be my MC channel. Mm. So then I, um, send the message uh, set set value dollar sign one to the prepend object, and that the set message to prepend sets what you're going to prepend to the other thing that comes in. So um, the other thing that comes in is going to be a MIDI event message coming from the launch pad. And the other problem, of course, is that the note numbers go from one one to one eight, and then they start at two one to two eight. So I have to do a similar remapping um, to get like some fun scale. And what I decided to do was basically map um, uh, using two tables, which is my usual technique to um, do note remapping. So the table on this one is the um, basically the individual buttons of a row. Mm. Uh, so every row is going to be the same and map this way. Right. And then this one is the, the mappings of the column. So I'm transposing that other row to different, um, different starting notes mm. over the range that the Kalimba sample works in. And then I made a couple of different presets. I like this use of table. Table is so useful. So... Um, yeah, I'm old school. Table is 
like the first Max object I heard about. So let's <laughs> let's listen to what this sounds like. So I'm gonna basically I can treat it as a sort of transposing kalimba. Um, so each row is like a kalimba, but then I have like eight of them. They're all transposed to different notes. So you can do these sort of patterns where you you keep one hand the same, and then you start messing with the other hand. Okay, so, um, and then you can just change the uh, presets to get some different thing going on here. I don't know what this one is. And you can sound like you actually know what you're doing. The, by the way, there's a great uh, soundtrack to um, a um, movie uh, called, uh, there's a, um, a, a version of um, it's a movie called Kafka, and a very similar technique was used in the the soundtrack to this movie. And it's uh, Cliff Martinez, who's a pretty well known film composer, and he worked with this guy um, Jeff Rona to build a Max patch that basically remapped the keyboard in similar ways. So that it sounded like this uh, person was doing these virtuosic uh, runs on a stringed instrument, but it was actually just samples, and you could just play scales. And if you play the scales really fast with two hands, you could get this kind of sound to it. And it's all just tables. Um, but check out that um, check out that movie. It's a cool movie, and also the soundtrack's really great. And you can you know hear one of the soundtracks done with Max. That's um, cool. So um, anyway, so this is a similar technique to um, what I kind of helped those guys come up with for that um, situation, um, but I'm using a launch pad, not a, uh, not a piano keyboard. So um, let's look at what, um, what's going on here. So um, we have this MCS fizz and the name of the file, and then it says Chan64. So this is SFIS in the MC wrapper. So that's how you can use set value to get different channels of output. And then um, what I didn't... Um, um, also, you can set... Really, each SFIS is only playing one, um, one voice at a time. But you could set this down to like four. It does reduce the immense cpu of this thing a little bit um so the other thing i have going on and the reason that i wanted to isolate all the channels was um, i wanted to map the polyphonic aftertouch of the launch pad to pitch bend so um, if i hold down the note and then kind of press on it you can get this kind of bendy sound of it um, and um, let me turn this up a little bit so um, and it's hard to kind of get the um, get the sense of this but basically it creates this sort of chorusing effect when the pitch bend is only applied to one note and the other ones don't have it so let me see if I can demonstrate this Okay, so that, very the nice. Only, the only way that you can do that is with this channel isolation um, technique, because SFIS is a monophonic sampler from uh, for on the from, from the perspective of MIDI. Okay, so do you want to see the next thing I made? Yes, please. Okay. So this one loads a lot faster. And this one uses MC Snow Phaser, which I know a lot of people have trouble with, including me. And, even, and I wrote it, so um, I thought I'd make a, uh, a little demo of this. 
and also show another obscure MC object that you probably haven't used yet, but is actually kind of hip, and um, that is MC MCP SF Play. Has anyone ever used MCP SF Play? No, no. <laughs> Just uh, for the folks out there, give us a quick explanation on MCP. Okay, so MCP SF Play, it, like you can do a bunch of stuff with it, but basically it's M, it's SF Play in the MC wrapper. So that means there's like 16 or whatever in de, totally independent SF Play objects that you can basically control together. And if you Damn. send them set value, then you're addressing each one individually. But because you initialize them together, they all have the same file in them. So if you look at this little uh -huh. part of the patch that I'm going to highlight here, um, um, using the H method, um, good for giving Max patch presentations. Basically, what's going to happen here is that it's just going to count from 1 to 16 using MC target, which prepends a number with set value. Uh, and then it's going to start each of these samples um, every 700 milliseconds. So it's like a round. Uh huh. And so the purpose of this patch is to do uh, what I like to do um, uh, as, a, um, as a musician playing the piano, which is turn melody into harmony. So mm. I have the Dudek sound, uh, which comes with MSP, and it plays a melody. But if you basically play in it around, you're gonna, um, you're basically kind of creating a static chord. And by manipulating the interval by which you start the sounds with this metro, you can get more or less of the chord. So if you if you set the interval to like really short, you're just getting like the first couple notes of that melody, and so the the chord will only have a couple notes. But as you lengthen it. And it's like very nonlinear, as you'll hear, like um, what what actually happens because some of the notes repeat in the the melody, and it's okay. So that's the basically that's the raw material of this thing. And then the MC snow phaser part comes in, where I wanted to do this thing where I um, applied reverb to um, a sample, but you only heard the reverb when the sample was playing. So mm. not the, not all the time. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm using N MC snow phaser as a kind of gate. Um, so the sample will, it'll like dip into the sample, turn it on using MC up down, which everyone should be using because it's like um, the best way to turn a phaser into a nice ramp up and down. Um, <clears throat> so you won't get clicks. And uh, so it applies the uh, sample to the, um, the gen, uh, this is like gigaverb gen example. So it'll apply it to the reverb and it also gates the output of gen too. So basically, um, all, you, you hear the reverb coloring the sound. You don't hear the, the sound in a room. So it's a different way of thinking about reverb as mm. like a way to color sound, but not like make it sound like you're in a church or something like that. Right. Um, so I also just there since the output of this thing is stereo, it's stereo, but there's 16 instances of this gen reverb. So uh, it's stereo. So I have like the left one going to be gated, and then I have the right one, which actually is like on all the time. So you could have a little bit of ambience, and then I mix them together uh, if you want to hear that. So all I need to do to get this started is hit the um, the start button on the metro. Um, Here we go, folks. So this is mostly just the gated colored thing. And then if I start changing the, um, first I'll just show how you can manipulate this. Um, so if I change the metro interval to 100, it's just the first couple notes. And then I can change it to 800. And then the other notes start to come in 
as it cycles through and starts. Okay, and then it'll stop after a bit. That's what I like about MC is like you get these things set set up, and then you hit the stop button on your metronome or whatever, and it takes a while before things actually stop. I guess I'm really into stopping. David, could you just let that run a second and just just maybe give it a 20, 30 second run in, in no talking? I think when you talk, it cuts the uh, max audio okay. out. Sure. Like, Sure, I'll change it while I and not tell you what I'm doing. But I did want to say before, um, maybe what I'll, okay. So maybe what I'll do is I'll not talk, but I also want to change the parameters to MC Snow Phaser. Um, and I have a couple presets and stuff like that. So you can hear like how MC Snow Phaser is influencing what's going on. Awesome. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say about MC Snow Phaser is if you try to use it, the, the secret is use the um, MC Signal Probe. So put your mouse over the output and watch what it's doing. And mm. that'll give you an idea. So this is kind of what I was hoping for, is like all these phasers that have different lengths and um, are consistent across all the channels. Um, but to get that, like you really have to spend a lot of time tweaking the parameters. OK, so I will shut up, and you can just listen to this for, for a minute. Huh. It's like the noise suppression is kicking in or something. Oh, because it's constant, maybe. Hmm. So, um, Maybe it's not going to work because of the nature of the sound. Huh? The the parts that are getting through sound incredible. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's okay. I'll, you know, play with it. This one, it's really easy to play with. So I'll just um, let people play with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, those are the main things I wanted to say. It was like MCP SF play, your, your instant cannon uh, in Max, and then um, MC Snow Phaser look at the output like you can listen to what you're you know you can obviously adjust it until you like what you hear but if you're really confused about what's going on just look at it and... yeah signal probing is essential i find for mc it's particularly mc it's always my something about hearing and seeing it at the same time makes it intuitive okay Wow. Uh, we, that's, that's, those are the patches, David. Yeah. Awesome folks. Uh, if you have questions about what you've just seen, drop it in the comment, or if you'd like to come up and say hello, uh, pop your hand up and we can ask David some questions. Uh, David, we have one question here from Alex Mesca down there in Australia. It's one of our uh, CTs. He asked, can we get MCP built into MC playlist? No, because it's a UI object, and uh, M the MC wrapper does not host UI objects. Uh, uh, the you know, playlist Alex... is just a, a UI thing around SF Play. So you can right. all the all the same features are um, in SF Play. It's just not visual. Um, there is a, uh, so, M so MCP, I know that's so confusing, and Joshua hates me because I have this confusing <laughs> prefix or everything. But the, <laughs> the idea is like, if there's an MCP thing, it's like, um, the, way, the way it is designed is that things like DAC and SF Play just basically are one thing with lots of channels. 
right? So you don't want like a bunch of DAX because there's only one resource. So similarly, there's only one sound file. And, uh, you know, if, it, if that sound file is eight channels, then you just want to like um, pipe that through your eight channels of MC. But in some weird cases, you do want um, multiple res multiple copies of the same kind of resourcey thing, and that's why there's an MCP SF play and an MCP SF record. Mm. And right. MCS is S stands for single. It's like one object with uh, where if you normally would have like a bunch of outlets with individual signals, they get all combined into one MC multi-channel signal. That is some good knowledge there. Uh, David, do you have, uh, is there a singular good resource? Maybe it's Gregory's old uh, MC Journey tutorials for working with the the rapper. I will post Gregory's Journey. This is a good resource here, folks. Oh yeah, Joshua, good call. Did you ever, uh, did that uh, loop thing get posted in the chat yet? Or did I... Yes, I posted that there. And that, just a reminder folks, there is a lot of very cool patches in that article from the presentation David and I gave at loop in 2018. A lot of patches. Yeah, I was a little bit, what, overachiever. We got it done, though. We got it done. We came in pretty much on time, I think. Um, and uh, here is another one. Here's another great resource. Here is the... Um, I think this was the first MC stuff, uh, MC tutorials we even did uh, by Darwin Gross. These are Darwin's MC recipe uh, tutorials, which are very good as well. They're all good spots to start. Any questions, folks? Uh, put your hand up or drop them in the in the chat, and we'll ask David why we have him here. Yeah, user friendly. That's a good question. I mean, just like many things in Max, I mean, of course you don't have to use it. It's another area to explore. I think the ease of which you can manipulate multiple channels of audio at once is a big plus for me with MC. And I think you're about to get some answers from other users in the comments as to why MC. Um, things like modulation, deviation. David, what would you say an advantage of using MC is? Uh, well, one way that I think about it, so with this, with this kalimba example, it's like you could do it with poly, but it's just conceptually to me, it's like, why not try to map it's it's closer to the idea of the computer version of the real system. Mm. So you're going to have like a piano. Piano is like 88 keys duplicated. So that's one of the one of the things is like in how is a how is a piano mixed? It's like it's basically mixed in the air, but there are like 88 separate strings all being hit by 88 separate hammers and um so this idea that you can not have to mix too early is really one of the things that i discovered working with it so if you think about typical daw it's like everything gets mixed to stereo on a track 
and then you mix all the tracks. But what if you could not, what, what if you didn't have to mix until like the very end? I recently just saw this amazing Max for Live device patch thing that was like based on this idea, like I'm just gonna have like 64 outputs or whatever. And that uh, it's like each sound is like basically a, there's a poly in the thing, but basically it's like, it's creating a spatial spatialized output where each element of the thing is spread out into a 64 channel um, audio space or whatever. And just thinking about that, like not having to mix un until the absolute last moment when you're like, whatever number of speakers you have is more like how things are in real life. And this idea that we had to shoehorn everything into stereo and then kind of pan it around is really artificial and I think uh, is limiting. And so MC doesn't let you, doesn't force you to do that. Like poly, at least the old way it used used to work before MC existed. It's like all these voices and then they all get mixed to um, however number of outputs you have. Yeah, I I really like that way of thinking of it. it. Particularly the piano, right? Because we don't often, well, unless it's open, right? But a lot of folks don't look in and see the strings 230 or, you know, and, and realize, oh, well, that's that's like 230 voices or, and it, we just hear the output. Um, I like, I like that way of thinking that analogy to MC and, and Joshua has a good point here. And it's probably, I was about to say the same thing is that like playing with MC, I can patch an idea faster. And then if I want to, for the sake of, uh, efficiency, go to, um, poly later. Uh, another question here. Uh, well, someone asked if you recall the name of that Max for Live device. Oh, not exact, not available yet. <clears throat> not av it's not available yet. When it comes out, it's very cool. Ah, uh, it's to be released. To be released, yeah. Um, so I see one question, which is, um, how you use reverb to color the sound. So basically imagine that you um, you are applying a gate to both the sound and the effect simultaneously. So typically mm -hmm. like if I, if I, um, if I gate, I, I play a note into reverb, but I don't gate the output of the reverb that's simultaneous with the note, then I will hear, it sounds like the note is in a room. But if, uh, if you gate the effect so that it only lasts for the duration of the note, then it sounds like the note is colored by the effect. So it's like you ap applied the same envelope to the effect as you did to the sawtooth wave or whatever of the note. And that's kind of what's going on. Hmm. Do you see Alexander Panos's question here, David? Best methods for custom voice allocation and busy maps, something closer to how you can cleanly mute processing on specific voices in poly. MC note allocator add direct one has felt a bit clunky. I agree, and um, we're, we're going to improve all this. Um, there's a lot. A lot of improvements that can be made to make it easier, and um, there, um, yeah, I've just sort of recently realized a, a, some improvements to make. So stay tuned for that. There you go, Alexander. That's the, those are the answers we like, right? <laughs> uh, and I saw another question. But, um, here. Another another hint is that MC Snow Phaser can be very helpful with um, as an alternative to voice allocation. Ah, that's a good tip right there. All right, so you can basically there's a feature of M MC Snow Phaser where you can um, you can have it triggered uh, by audio. And um, basically what that allows you to do is um, 
you know, the audio stream trigger the phaser and then that it allocates it to a free channel. So it's similar. It's like voice allocation, but triggered by audio. So um, that's, that's, that's a good one to explore right there. I have to write that down myself. Hmm. Um, I saw another question here. Um, oh, yes. Have you ever thought about allowing users to increase the amount of MC channels without restarting the DSP? Um, so that is beyond my, uh, I have never, I, well, I would like to do that. But one thing to know about Max and the way MSP works is the basic architecture of the DSP is very static. So at least for the moment, like you, you compile a set of uh, unit generator instructions in a certain set order. And the only thing that you can really do is mute and unmute them dynamically. Um, you can't change the order um, without like stopping things. So we would have to think about like how to do it in some way that somehow kept the old one and crossfaded to the new one, which you can do, uh, and that might be a workaround, but maybe at some more fundamental level or something like that. So um, there is a feature of the in preferences where you can set a latency and then a crossfade time between the old and new. Um, uh, if you change if you change the DSP at all, right. So it was originally intended that that would just make editing more pleasant, but you can use it as a kind of live coding strategy or something like that. If you want. So there are other languages like Super Collider where basically it is completely dynamic and it doesn't use that um, technique. But um, originally the design of MSP and PD is the same. It's like based on based on music five uh, music and languages that where um, there was a, a step of assembling this sequence of unit generator operations and um, every time you every time you changed it it would have to rebuild it yeah. right hmm. so another question here I guess it is only for handling audio signal. And I wanted to say that this is another thing that we have done some little prototyping of is MC for the rest of the world. And um, there's all sorts of cool applications for this. Um, in, for example, in my, uh, my Kalimba patch, you could imagine like <clears throat> when you're handling the polyphonic um polyphonic aftertouch you could you could have um a separate like one thing i tr you could think is like oh i see some polyphonic aftertouch it gets above a certain point and then i want to trigger a line uh an event line to do like midi to do pitch bend envelopes or something like that mm. but you can't do it because you don't have mc so every single note is right. You need poly. You need a, a line for every single MIDI note. And if you had right. MC line no tilde, you could do it. Yes. So that's just a very simple reason why it's cool, and um, that's definitely something that we've um, played with. <clears throat> there is a a dirty little secret that you can actually apply the MC wrapper to non-audio objects doesn't really always work but i'm just oh inside a chip <laughs> might, might work it's not uh, not supported but not supported so don't don't contact support at cycling about that one um I'm not gonna very cool it, but 
Uh, I saw a question here about uh, when do we get MC and Rainbow? So there is MC Rainbow, but what that doesn't, what we need is MCS Rainbow. So that would I'll let you have um, all the channels of polyphony. So you you know Rainbow, you can have polyphony, but it's all mixed together like poly. So imagine if every every output of your Rainbow thing every voice was on a separate channel. That would be very cool. Mm. And then, of course, people want the MC objects in Rainbow itself, which, you know, that would be insane, too. But the first thing, like, given the existing MC world, that would be really useful is, that, um, is to not have to mix the polyphony of Rainbow. Right, right. Uh, I see Decompose has a question here. Uh, a playlist object for MIDI files. Can Great we idea. get one? Yeah, I think that actually is a pretty cool idea. Um, that would be cool. I could see it interfacing with Seek or something like that. Then you could have like um I'm trying to think of like what's a good pop like you have a bunch of pop song MIDI files. It's surprisingly easy to find classic pop songs as a MIDI file online. That would that would be pretty <laughs> fun to play with in Max. Especially those air old those air, Old Eric Sadi ones are all over the place. Oh, that's not that's not pop, but uh, nice one, David. Uh, that's some good good info here. Plenty of food for thought, folks. Uh, we might wrap it up soon, but if you've got any more questions for David, now is a great time. You can. Get an immediate answer. Uh, otherwise, we might call it a night very shortly. Uh, David, will you be dropping the patches in the chat or? Well, doesn't the chat disappear? Um, no, it's the... it sticks around, and and okay. from there we can also reference uh, the patches from elsewhere in Discord. Okay, the I chat... will do that. Um, yeah, Chad, I'm glad the chat actually stays around the Discord, unlike a Zoom call or something. Um, but uh, and I'll I'll put a link to um, uh, where you can get the Unreal Instruments uh, sample that I used. Yeah, Isabel for... shared the link a little earlier oh, in the okay, chat. Cool. But, okay. um, folks, so David is a little further up in the chat. Isabel posted the Unreal Instruments link for the kalimba that David is using in the patch. And then, you know, you, it's an exercise for the reader to find how to take the uh, mic noise out if you don't like it. Right. And you can learn something about the SFC format. Okay. Well, thanks for uh, having me, Tom. Yeah, it's a pleasure, David. Uh, I do see one last question here pertaining to Rainbow, something about uh, Blair's holiness to something mentioned in an earlier stream about uh, generating UIs for Rainbow. And uh, what kind of priority is that for us on the, the Rainbow development path? Um, I, I am playing with something, but I don't know when it's going to be fully realized. I mean, it's an infinite, uh, project, of course, but, um, I have, yeah. I have started on, I have started on it. I'll tell you, I'll say. There we have it, Blair. David's made a start. Uh, 
much like many of these things in Max, we we as artists that work at the company are usually throwing these ideas around pretty regularly, and it's just a matter of time being the uh, the grand decider on when it happens or not. Nice, David. Thank you for this. This is really great. And uh, folks, Dave is going to drop the patches in the comments. Thank you all for attending. You can, of course, all hang around in the chat after the stage ends. And, uh, you know... You might be able to get David to ask a few more questions even. All right, folks, it's been real. And uh, we'll see you back here. There's no scheduled Discord uh, events coming up, but no doubt we'll have one very soon. Stay tuned. We'll announce it in the general channel. Uh, and always, we take suggestions. So if there's someone, uh, you would like me to get a hold of, bring up from from the company or uh, from within Cycling 74 or an artist or um, another developer from elsewhere. Um, just make suggestions and I'll uh, see what I can do. Awesome, folks. Have a great evening, day, morning, wherever you may be in the world. Adios.